Camille Breeze is a singer-songwriter from North Shore area, and she has been referred to as the Sultress of Song. She began singing and playing the piano at the age of six. And then in her work, uh, she focused on her interest in art and textile and went to college at Oberlin, where she received her uh, BA. Uh, in fashion and then went to the Institute of Technology for her masters. And she has been working for a number of years, for 16 years, as the founder and director of Museum Textile Services in Andover. And she specializes in preserving textiles that are under the care of private individuals, cultural heritage institutions, and government agencies. Camille also is the author of numerous articles and a book on American tapestry conservation techniques. She has taught in the United States, the Dominican Republic, and Peru. As a singer-songwriter, her original songs are rooted in traditions of the great vocal storytellers. Camille emerged on the music scene in 2004 and acknowledges that her music theater background and her love of a cappella and pop and roots influence the music that she performs. And she performs in the Boston area solo and has also worked with many Boston area players. Camille has a CD of her original songs, In Love, that was released in 2010 and has covers and songs about love, loss, lust, and redemption spanning the past 75 years. She's also an avid traveler, and on occasion you might see her spotted on the back roads or highways on her Harley with a ukulele strapped on her back. <laughs> when I asked Camille about the importance of art for society, she responded, art and music are our purest artifacts, which need to be preserved to tell our stories. And so now we are fortunate to have Camille Breeze joined today by Kenny Salser, and she will be sharing a few of her original songs with us. So please give a round of applause for Camille Breeze. I heard Tracy K. Smith speak at Phillips Academy last night. Uh, it was a, a great experience, but the best part about hearing Tracy K. Smith was that I was surrounded by a hundred teenagers. They were all so engaged and so invested in what she had to say. And uh, one young man asked her whether it was a different process to write poems about herself and her own life than it was to write about other people. And she, she gave a long answer. It was really interesting. Um, but as a singer-songwriter, really resonated with me. And she said that uh, when she's having trouble finding answers in her own life, she writes poems about other people in, in other personas, and that's uh, how she arrives at her answers. And, um, so right now we're going to play a, so a song for you that I wrote in 2006. And um, I wrote it in another persona. Actually, I wrote it for my two cats. It's called The Ballad of Captain and Lily. There's a repeating phrase that you can join in on. Captain Kurigawa was a very special man. His ship had wrecked here years ago, bearing silk from Japan. Large and imposing, with a shocking head of gray. Captain Kurigawa never did have much to say. His wife's name was Lily, she was a tiny, fragile thing. When Captain Kurigawa had given her a ring He said, I will be faithful and I'll always be true You'll never want for anything I will provide for you But Lily wasn't sure about this quiet brooding soul 
whose eyes had witnessed horrors of which I'd never told. But he promised her a house and garden full of many kin. So Lily had consented and she pledged her love to him when he sang Lily, my charming Lily. Oh, Lily, my darling Lily. Oh, Lily, my lovely Lily. Oh, Lily. The years went by, their family grew, and Lily found her strength in raising seven sons who all grew to be fine men. A carpenter, a teacher, an apprentice to a clerk, a luthier, two farmers, and one still too young to work. The captain was a lute player and clothier by trade. People came from counties round to purchase what he made. Upon his 16th birthday, the youngest son appeared and spoke the very words that Captain Kurigawa feared. I wish to be a sailor, it would make a man of me. But the captain cried, I forbid a son of mine to sail the sea. Not another word was said about the episode. But that night, while his family slept, the captain sat alone singing, Lily, my charming Lily. Oh, Lily, my darling Lily. Oh, Lily, my lovely Lily. The next day, Captain found Lily sitting neath the tree. So he sat down beside her and they stared out at the sea. It's time I finally told you, Lily, all there is to know about that dark and fateful night a many year ago. My ship ran aground beyond where now sits my knot's light. With 37 souls on board and only I survived. I woke up later on the beach beneath the waning moon. From out across the water, I could softly hear a tune that went, oh, 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 oh. Now you know the legend of Kurigawa Cove, where Lily and the captain long ago once made their home. Now all that remains is a cherry blossom tree and a field of tiger lilies that look toward the sea. They say that if you stand there beneath the waning moon, from out across the water, you can sometimes hear a tune that says, Lily, my charming Lily. Oh, Lily, my darling Lily. Oh, Lily, my lovely Lily. Oh, Lily, oh, Lily. So uh, since I met Kenny Seltzer a couple years ago, I've been just dying to play with him and collaborate with him. And uh, so this was uh, this is our first time to do more than one song together. So I'm very grateful for that. So over a hundred years ago, another fairly famous ship went down, and uh, a songwriter named Lead Belly wrote a song about it. So I'm going to play this for you. And for those of you who didn't sing on the last song. You're going to have to sing on this one. There's uh, just no excuse. It was midnight on the sea. 
band playing near my God to thee. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. It was midnight on the sea, band playing near my God to thee. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Titanic, when she got her load, Captain hollered all aboard. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Titanic, when she got her load, Captain hollered all aboard. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Jack Johnson tried to get on board. The captain said, we don't haul no coal. Fare thee. Don't haul no coal. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Now, this Jack Johnson that Lead Belly refers to isn't the sort of surfer, singer, songwriter guy from California. It's a, a famous boxer, an African American boxer, actually. And uh, he tried to book passage on the Titanic in first class, being one of the most famous men in the world. But he was told he could only do uh, steerage. So, he went on another ship. She was coming round the curve when she ran into a big iceberg. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. She was coming round the curve when she ran into a big iceberg. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Titanic was a sinking down, had them lifeboats all around. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Titanic was a sinking down, had them lifeboats all around. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Had them lifeboats all around, save the women and the children, let the men go down. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Had the light bolts all around, save the women and the children, let the men go down. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. When Jack Johnson heard the mighty shock, could have seen him doing the eagle rock. Fare thee, Shock. Could have seen him do an eagle rock. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. It was midnight on the sea, band playing near my God to thee. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. It was midnight on the sea, band playing near my God to thee. Fare thee. Titanic, fare thee well. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Fare thee, Titanic, fare thee well. Thank you for singing. Cheryl mentioned that I'm an art conservator, textile conservator specifically, and for 10 years I took groups of international museum professionals down to Peru to collaborate with Peruvian archaeologists to conserve Peru's uh, archaeological heritage. And uh, the Peruvian um, landscape preserves anything organic that you bury in it, including people and textiles, and so that's what we worked on. And uh, even more extraordinary than the, the patrimony of Peru are the people of Peru. So um, I've been going there since I was, actually since I was three weeks old. And uh, so uh, when I heard on uh, August 15th, 2007, that a 7.5 earthquake had hit the central coast of Peru, right where my Peruvian family is from, I was um, necessarily upset. So um, I immediately wrote this song 
and um, many people in this room actually donated money towards um, a donation that I brought down and uh, gave to some of the smaller institutions um, that I knew that were affected. Um, the quake came at 6.30 in the evening on a Wednesday, and um, many of the colonial churches in that section of Cañete, uh, which were you know, 400 years old, um, did not survive the quake, and uh, that's what this song is about. Come rain or come shine, the widow Rimaki prepares for the climb from her home in the valley to the chapel in town where she could sit down and pray for the souls of her cherished Luis. May he rest in peace. And the three little children they had buried long ago. Oh, Master of Miracles, I am praying to thee. Please listen to me. Because I really need you, I implore you, Senor, to give me the strength and to help me to survive. Carlos Molina, was a father of nine who had worked at the mine until the mine had shut down. Well, Carlos had a secret and it burned at his soul of a tomb on a hillside full of textiles and gold from his Inca ancestors who had lived on the land. If he dug it all up, he could be a rich man. O oh, Master of Miracles, I am praying to thee, please listen to me. Because I really need you, I implore you, Senor, to give me the strength and to help me to survive. Maria Cristina was a young girl of eight, and she was running late to meet her mama. It was after 6.30 and mass had begun, and so she had to run because her mama would be angry. As she ran through the door, she didn't notice that the floor was moving beneath her till she came to the fountain as Christina dipped her fingers into the bowl. The water started to roll and then it spilled down her dress. She crawled to her mother and they crouched beneath the pew. By then everybody knew that an earthquake was upon them as the roaring grew louder. Together they prayed that their old and fragile church would protect them today. Señor de los milagros, yo rezo a ti. Escúchame, porque te necesito, te imploro, Señor, de darme la ayuda y la fortaleza para vivir. Oh, Master of Miracles, I am praying to thee. Please listen to me, because I really need you. I implore you, Señor to give me the strength and to help me to survive. Please help me to survive. Lord, help me to survive. I have been writing verse in my head, not daring to let the words out. I'm a lapsed magician, hiding colored satin scarves up my sleeve rather than pull them out of someone's ear. It seems like a risk 
to start again after unconsciously swearing it off, sober but fondling the bottle, knowing what will happen if I give in to it. It will never stop. It will consume me. I will lose this self and every safe, normal thing I have worked for if I start again. But what do I have without my sacred addiction? Kept at arm's length for fear of the repercussions? Opening to myself could make me flee the safe place and do something rash, like love with my whole heart, trust in someone I have closed off, live with abandon. Oh, crap. Now look what I've done. Thank you. This is the worst allergy season ever. People that never had them, have them. People that have them, have them worse. People that had them worse are heavily medicated. And now, your local forecast. A mood swing advisor is in effect following a surge of unpleasant airborne pathogens. Hypersensitive people are advised to stay indoors indefinitely. Spring is my worst season. Pollen has turned me into an unsociable ghoulish ogre. Everything's too bright, too loud, and more irritating than usual. And I haven't even hit the front door. Summer, really my worst season. Those humid days just suck the life right out of me. Oh, and you see a beautiful summer rain? I see an army of airborne mold spores on the attack to every AC and fan vent. These micro meanie parasitic fungi are armed and dangerous. Fall, my worst season. <laughs> Glassy eyes, raspy voice, and I always look Ragweed has waged war and is winning. This lowly vegetating weed commands respect. Hence, my bi-weekly allergy shots. Winter, surely my worst season. <laughs> Windows closed, heating vents recirculating stale air, there's fireplaces, wood stoves, animal dander, and dust mites thrive in everyone's carpet, furniture, and beddings. It's enough to make you toss your cookies. And just as the snow melts, you guessed it, snow mold allergies. Yeah, go ahead and laugh, but it's legit. And that's just the weather. There's cigarettes, Cigars, pipes, mothballs, and those oxymoronic auto air fresheners. Anything smoky or perfumey just gives me the willies. How are we doing? Okay. Feeling good? <laughs> if you're looking for more, oh, that's, and now your weekend forecast. A spike in the miserable index brings apathy to otherwise less disgruntled people. <coughs> If you're looking for more information on how to allergy-proof your life, visit us at yuckyuck.beachchair. Thank you. <laughs> New York City Mermaid, open up the sparkling night with your bellowing red accordion. Your beauty is a curated wildness, a fiery swipe edited by clean lines. Harness your candy apple brightness, your celebrated thickness, like a frosted diner glass, who reminds us that pink always comes from sacrificing red to white. Thank you. Every revolution needs fresh poems. That is the reason poetry cannot die. It is the reason poets go without sleep, and sometimes without lovers, without new cars, and without fine clothes. The reason we commit to facing the dark and resign ourselves regularly to the possibility of being wrong. Poetry is leading us. It never cares how we will be held by lovers or drive fast or look good in the moment, but about how completely we are committed to movement, both inner and outer, and devoted to transformation and to change. 
Sometimes I suspect that man learned all he needs to know ages ago, and for centuries all we've done is reinvent the wheel, not having figured out its round. Mm -hmm. The only road to progress is a full circle, but where we've been is three-dimensional. Mankind takes off in non-parallel directions, gyrating off different axes, degrees of tilt and tolerance, an incalculable mix around a sphere. The old precepts said it all. Love thy neighbor as thyself. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I heard a preacher on the radio expounding on the golden rule one weekday morning around 10. He spoke movingly of recognition, realization, and release as the means for solving life's insufferable problems and supplied examples. I wondered if he had an open relationship with his daughter or swore at his dog. Later, I bought a cross and three small monkeys. Christ has his ankles bound, his arms outstretched. The monkey's hands protect eyes, ears, and mouth from unwise perceptions. We bury the innocent ones in words in between the times we pile their bodies high. Perhaps the sixth sense is memory, nearly atrophied. Thank you. Dr. Michael Thompson. Diabetes is one of the country's most prevalent chronic conditions, affecting nearly 29 million Americans. The disease is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and can lead to other serious conditions such as heart disease, blindness, kidney disease, and amputations. Another 86 million people, more than one in three Americans, are living with prediabetes, and nearly 90% of those are unaware of it. A person with prediabetes has a blood sugar level higher than normal but not high enough for a diagnosis of diabetes, and without lifestyle changes to improve their health, such as maintaining a healthy weight and getting regular exercise, many patients with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years. Check with your doctor to get screened and tested, and act today. For more information, visit the American Medical Association at preventdiabetesstat.org.